Hello fellow adventurers, welcome to Artistic Adventures. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Blythe dolls. I'm going to give you some brief history and background and then I'm going to show you their extensive shoe collection which has a lot more shoes than I do. So first of all I want to introduce you to my Blythe girls and I am naming them alphabetically. This is Aubrey. This is Bella. She's not on a stand and there's a reason for that. And then this is Celeste. And this is Deirdre. And they have these names because that's the name they told me when they came out of the package. They said this is my name. And that's how it is. <laughs> so um, for those of you who don't know about Blythe Dolls, they were produced a while back by um, Hasbro. And then um, they went out of business here in the United States. And then a Japanese company bought the molds and started reproducing them. So you can buy new Blythe dolls again. You can buy dolls that are called factory dolls. And those are dolls that were made from factory parts and put together but are not the official, quote, new Blythe dolls. So obviously the factory dolls are cheaper. So, um, as you can see from my dolls, they can come with a matte finish, or the newer dolls come with a gloss finish, like the rest of these. So, um, that's one part of it. The other part is, I just want to show you why they're so unique. First of all, their head is very heavy, because there's a mechanism in there that moves the eyes and changes the eye color. So right now, you can see it's sort of a dark brown, if I pull this clicks and they open, they're green and they're straight ahead. Pull it again, they open and they're a lighter brown. Pull it again, they're straight ahead and bluish, bluish purple. Pull it again and they go back to the right. Now, I think from my point of view, the reason that these dolls have become popular is they just are so expressive. Um, they have these kind of sad little faces. And with the way the eyes can move, it just gives them a lot of expression. And I love posing them in different places. They are very photogenic. Now, a lot of people will customize their dolls. And one of the things they'll do is go into the head mechanism in the back there's three screws and you can take this plate off and they can add a cord that comes out through this square hole and it allows you to keep the doll's eyes closed and a lot of people like to paint and design things on the eyelids so that's one customization um, another customization they'll do is change out the color of the eye chips you can buy custom eye chips that are maybe more fanciful like glittery or just different colors if you want a different color for your doll and these little discs pop out of the round eyeball socket not very easily but they do pop out some people will take off the paint and repaint them some people will actually carve these in different lip shapes different nose shapes add little tear ducts um, and then repaint them there's a lot of customization that goes on Another thing that people do, and I have done to this doll, and that's why she's not on a stand, because once you change the body, I don't think they stand up very well. But I'll show you. This is what the stands look like. That's a Blythe stand. But um, when you put them on the stand with the, these uh, jointed bodies, they, the head just kind of takes over, and they don't really stand up. So that's kind of a negative, but the other thing is with the jointed uh, bodies, you can pose them in a lot better situation. So this is what the jointed body look. This is one I haven't put on a doll, and this one has all the different joints, swivels at the shoulders, and basically all you do is you take that this um, plaque off of the back of the head and you just stick this up in there because it, it looks pretty much the same. Uh, I have a body for my dark skin doll also that I'm probably going to change out. 
Now, the Blythe body, this is the one that I took off of Belle, looks like this. I mean, Bella. Her name's Bella. My dog is Belle. <laughs> now, they do bend at the knees with three clicks, so they'll bend like that. The arms uh, do not, there's no elbow joint or wrist joint, and the hips will just, you know, do like back and forth. And they have little tiny feet like most 1-6 dolls do. But you can see it has this head and depending on which doll body you get, this is um, one that I got from the internet and this is a different type of doll. I think this is an ozone doll or maybe this is the sweet, I think this is the sweet tiger doll. Sweet tiger uh, has a lot of shoes and bodies and a lot of Blythe stuff, but they also have a lot of ball jointed doll stuff too, clothes, etc. It just takes forever to get to you because it's shipped from halfway around the world, well, all the way around the world, um, but that is a good site for getting some of this stuff. Um, and I just haven't changed any of the other dolls out yet, and I'm kind of hating that they don't stand up that well once they're in the... Um, once they have the new ball jointed body. The other thing, the ball jointed bodies can come apart, they pop off, they're not strung like a typical ball jointed doll. So just to let you know, and the other thing is their feet are just a little bit bigger as you can see, so sometimes the shoes don't fit as well. And that's one of the problems with Belle's feet. These boots just don't fit on, although they are super cute. They just don't go all the way on her feet. So that's another consideration with changing out the body. But um, if you wanted to change their hair, this top cap comes off and you can actually buy a blank cap like this and put it on the doll. And then you can make a wig cap, which I want to do for one of these dolls and make it out of alpaca fiber because it just makes a nicer you know, more realistic looking hair and you can get some different effects with that fiber than you can with the synthetic fiber. So, um, that's kind of the history. Um, you can buy the factory dolls. Uh, the factory dolls are much cheaper. They're not the real dolls, but um, they you, there's no way you could really, I guess, tell the difference. They kind of look the same. Um, this one says Hasbro Inc. 2006 Blythe trademark, but um, she's a factory doll. What can I say? Anyway, um, so now that you kind of know about Blythe and you kind of can see all about them, I wanted to show you their shoe collection because I just was always a person who got blown away by little tiny shoes. Even before I got into dolls, baby shoes. When you go in the store and you see baby shoes, it just, I don't know, I just love them. I just want to buy them and take them home and look at them. <laughs> I always wanted to have a baby just so I could buy baby shoes for her. <laughs> okay, so anyway, when I, I got the Blythe dolls and the, the ball jointed dolls, the Blythe dolls in particular, I wanted to buy shoes for because they have this, those little tiny feet, and I don't really enjoy making shoes for the smaller feet. And they have such cute shoes that I just couldn't, I couldn't resist. So I'm going to take you through the shoe collection. I'm going to angle my camera down a little bit so that we can get a better look at the shoes. And first of all, I want to show you Deirdre's shoes, which... Nancy has been laughing at, uh, not Nancy, I'm sorry, Dorothy has been laughing at when I do my videos. Sometimes you'll see her in the background, and she's just got these cute little, con like, Converse tennis shoes, and they're made out of canvas and rubber, just like the real ones, and she's got on a pair of cute socks. Now, I did get, uh, as a gift from a company that I bought some stuff from, these plasticky shoes, and they have a opening in the back. I just don't really like them because... Well, they're just plastic, and they don't look real. But it is a possibility, if you like that sort of thing. And Celeste has on some cute little 
more formal looking shoes. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see these a little bit better. As you can see, and they have a cute little bow and a buckle, and you have to buckle them to get them on. So those are kind of cute. And then Aubrey is rocking some really cute pink boots that um, are kind of like combat boots, but pink. So she's got her own little style. Now you can buy adorable little socks and like thigh-high stockings and uh, tights. There's some... Um, of the ones that I have. Deidre's got on a pair of white ones. These are some some tan tan ones and they also have um, little leg warmers <laughs> which are adorable. Alright so those are some things you can buy to go with the shoes. Now let's get into the shoe collection. Alright the first pair are these little boots and I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more so you can see them in all their cuteness. They have a bow on the side, um, not much of a heel, and you just slide the doll's foot in with or without socks. So there's those boots, and then I have a pair of white boots that have buckles all the way up the side, and these buckles really do work. And they're really adorable. And then these, which I totally love, are some pink skull design on black canvas boots. They look good with kind of, uh, I have her a little pink outfit with black leggings and they look really cute with that. And then another pair of boots are these black patent leather chunky combo cap. I guess like combat boot type things, but they've got a little bit thicker heel as you can see. We'll put those over there. And now going into some shoes, how cute are these little Mary Janes? They're adorable. Little buckles on the sides. <laughs> A lot of times the shoes will come in these boxes. They did, the ones that I got from Sweet Tiger did, which is really nice, nice way to store them. So these are some little short white boots with a little cuff on the top. And then one of my things that I always wear, this is just something I've always worn, it's, I guess my signature look. I love black patent loafers and I wear them with leggings. I wear them with a lot of things, but I wear them with leggings with no socks. It's just kind of my thing, <laughs> my style. So I had to get my girls a pair. And here's a pair of really cute sassy red shoes that have gold trim and a gold strap, T-strap and buckle. Well, I'll just leave these out for now. They have such adorable shoes. It's hard to resist. Look at these. They have a little bunny tail. <laughs> and bunny ears on the front. And then a an ankle strap with a slight heel. And heels are, are okay because they're, they're not very tall, so you don't really have to have a different foot. Now these dolls, um, the, the jointed dolls that I, bodies that I bought, do have some ankle, mo a slight ankle movement, so they can do more of the heel look. But I just totally fall in love with these. And they have different colors too, that's the other thing. And here's a pair of pink shoes. And it looks like I lost the bow to that one, I'm not sure what happened, but supposed to have a bow on it. It has a little trim and an ankle strap. You know, when you lose something that tiny, you'll probably never find it. <laughs> and here are some shoes that I adore. I'm going to have to make a costume to go with these. I, I think they're kind of goth, you know, or vampire. <laughs> they got a bat on the back. 
I mean, how cute is that? A bat. And then the cross on the front. I think that would make a cute goth outfit for my Blythe. And I'll have to do one of those on camera and do a video about that. That would be very cute. And then last but not least are a couple of like Ugg style boots. Brown. They have a buckle on the side. And what is supposed to be, you know, like a fake fur trim. And a flat sole. Okay, sorry, my phone rang while I was filming and I had to turn off the camera. So, um, what I'm going to do is take the camera off the tripod and come around here and just pan across the shoes so you can get another look and all their adorableness. And then that's really the end of this video. There's a last view of my girls and you'll be seeing them from time to time. They like to pose and I do put uh, pictures of them up on Instagram along with some of my other dolls. So if you're not following me on Instagram, you might want to do that. You'll get to see some pictures that aren't always on YouTube. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that and I introduced you to um, these adorable dolls and all that uh, they can be manipulated and styled and and loved and I hope that you might enjoy them as well. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about Blythe dolls, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I'm happy to help. And as always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Thanks and bye.